It's March 18th. Here in the Mogulum studio for lunch doodle, which also means that it's turned the number 18 into a silly face day. Right there. Nine. It's Mo Willems here back at the studio. I hope that you had a good day. I hope you got to do a lot of doodling and drawing with your families in the last couple days. As a matter of fact, last night, our family all had a dining room dinner doodle, which means that we took paper like this, butcher block paper, we put it on the dining room table and we had dinner and then we made some drawings and everybody drew in a different style. Some people drew realistically and some drew abstractly. We'll talk about abstracts later. Do you want to see the drawings that I made during dinner last night? They spent a lot of time talking, so the drawings took a little bit more time. And when I started, I didn't know what I was doing, so I just sort of let it, let it happen. So I drew three birds each of them very, very silly. I think I've, I've probably drawn birds like this before with the crayons, but definitely this type of bird is new to me. And maybe you guys can do that tonight. You can pull out some paper and when you all have dinner together and you're talking and whatnot, after dinner, you can have a little doodle and come up with some characters. Well, Yesterday, I showed you some of the drawers with the Elephant and Piggy books, the original drawings, and I taught you guys how to draw Elephant Gerald. And then I said, well, why don't you make up some Elephant and Piggy stories of your own? And then I realized I forgot to teach you how to draw Piggy. So let's start off by drawing Piggy. I'm going to get a piece of paper and I'll get a marker. So make sure that you guys are ready. If you have a piece of paper and a marker, if you don't, pause. Okay. You just get a normal piece of paper. This is simple. It could be a pencil. It could be a marker. It could be a crayon. Doesn't really matter what you draw. With. There you go. Okay. You got it. Oh. Okay. Play. So, Piggy is really a bunch of numbers put together and one letter. We're going to start with the number zero for Piggy, but unlike a normal zero, we're going to squish it. We're going to pretend it's a balloon and step on it and squish it a little and make it something that I like to call a movo. There we go. That's my movo. That's pretty good. And then inside it, because that was fun to make, we're going to make a second smaller movo. Just like that. Now it kind of looks like a misshapen donut. Now my favorite number is number 11. So we're going to write the number 11. 11. And because that was so fun, we're going to write the number 11 again. But this time we're going to take these top 11s and we're going to inflate them. We're going to go and make them big. And that way, we can really, really see the eyes because they're the most important part of the drawing. Now for the letters, we take the letter M and we break it in half, put half of the M here, half of the M there, and then a little bit letter U for a smile. We've got a piggy. Yeah, okay, right? And I have to put my name there. You have to put your name so that if I run across that later, that I know that I made that drawing of Piggy. And so now, if you look at this, and then you look at yesterday's episode, you will know how to draw Elephant and Piggy, and you can make your own Elephant and Piggy adventures. It's pretty exciting. So, Elephant and Piggy, I started in about 2007, I think the first one came out. Let's take a look, Actually, real quick, because they're all here. It's my drawing here, I'm gonna put that up now. Let's see, this is the first one. My friend is sad. We'll look at a blue from that. Okay. Oh, my friend is sad. Joe really is sad. There we go. 
early elephant and piggy and I made that drawing on January 9th, 2006. Well, that's a long time ago. But in 2006, I had already been writing for kids a long time because I started on a show called Sesame Street and I was a writer and an animator. And I started in, let's see, I actually had my early scripts. So when you write a script on television, they used to give you this really beautiful bound copy of all your scripts. It said Sesame Street and the season XXV1 which is kind of like a Super Bowl, and then 1994 to 1995. And these are my very first scripts that I wrote for Sesame Street all those years ago. And it was really special. They would give you these scripts in this bound thing, and then they would put your name on it. See how they said Mo Williams? Because I was a writer, very, very special. They, yeah, well, the next year, they got it right. They said Mo Willems, and they bound up all my scripts as well. And these were all the scripts that were turned into episodes. Well, I was also an animator on Sesame Street. An animator is someone who makes a lot of drawings. So many, 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 many drawings. And you put them in the right order, and then the drawings start to look like they move or things like that. And back in the day, we used to actually draw them on a piece of plastic called a cell and put one cell over the other. So let me, I wanna show you, I saved some of these cells. Why don't you take a look at these old, old cells. Let's see if you can, Little image here. Let me get in. Is that good? All right. So, see how and these are. This is about a guy with an octopus on their head. I like making things about people who have things on their heads, and another one who has a bigger octopus on their head. And the background is a different piece of paper. And you see how that head is a little brighter because it's a separate drawing than that body, and that thing is a separate drawing, that arm and that tentacle. And so all of these things separately don't mean anything. But when you put them together, then they mean something. So it's kind of like all the stuff that we're doing right now by staying at home and trying to be safe. It kind of feels like we're not doing anything. But if we all do it together, then we're really doing something magical. So here, let's see. Here we go. This is Susie Kabluzi. Susie Kabluzi was my first character, my first continuous character. And it was voiced by an actress named Ruth Buzzy, which is someone some of your grandparents will have heard of. Really, really funny. And there's Susie Kabluzi jumping up and down. And what I used to like to do back then, before I had invented a pigeon, I used to like to hide pictures of myself in my films. You see that? That's a little drawing of what I used to look like. I don't look like that anymore. I'm so old that my hair is no longer straight up. It falls right down. And that was Susie Capozzi. Oh, here's a cell from a film I made for HBO. See if you can find the hidden mo in this. This film was about a shark um, and it was about how sharks are really good and they don't like to eat people but but maybe they like to eat cartoonists. I don't know if you can see that hidden, the hidden mo in there. Um, let's see, here we go. Oh here, the very first Susie Kabluzi film and this is about a telephone and the telephone is a um, old-fashioned invention that used to be put on furniture and you used to have to go to it in order to talk to people. And you see how that part of the phone is brighter because it's a different cell. And I painted the background and there's Susie Kabluzi, her cat Fef, who's afraid of the telephone. And then this, I cut out all the pages and made shapes out of a phone book. 
And that you'll have to ask your great-grandparents about what a phone book is. Anyway, these are some cells. And I got to make that because I am an animator. And animation happens because of something called persistence of vision. If you have one drawing of one thing and another drawing of another thing, and you move them around fast enough, your brain can't keep up. So your brain starts to say, ooh, I wonder if it's just something moving. And it creates movement. Persistence of vision, very important. So I think it is time now, and I'm excited about this, is one of my favorite things, to teach you how to be an animator. Hubba what? How, how can I be an animator? I hear you asking right now. Yeah, I heard it. Um, this is how you can be an animator. You're gonna need a couple things. You're going to need a piece of paper, like in your printer or typewriter, and you're going to need a very special thing called a pencil. So, piece of paper and a pencil, if you don't have them, press pause. Oh, wait, I forgot something. Also, if you have a ruler or a straight edge or even scissors or able to fold something, I'm gonna use this ruler. All right, so here we go. Pause. All right, you got it? Okay, play. Here we go. I'm gonna take this piece of paper and I'm gonna make it tall like this. Actually, can we close that door? Let's do that one. Get the light will be just great. Perfect. And I'm gonna take about a knuckle's worth, an inch or so of that piece of paper like that, and I'm gonna fold it and make a strip. Maybe you need a grown-up or you want a grown-up to help you with this. But I basically, I make, I fold it nice and straight. I make this little strip, and then I take this ruler, and I'm gonna pull. Oh, look at that, I pulled the paper and it ripped. See, it's hard, I'm gonna do it again, because it's okay if you make a mistake. I'm gonna fold this piece of paper, like that. I'm gonna take my nail, I'm gonna get really, really sharp. And let's see, I'm gonna fold it the other way. Okay, now let's see if I can hold it and rip. Slow, slow rip. Slow, oop, hard. Oh man, slow. Okay, that's not so bad. How did yours come out? Did it come out? Well, maybe it didn't come out, so let's pause again. And you can do it again and practice and get it because this is the hardest part of being an animator is ripping this strip of paper. It really is the hardest part. We paused, okay. Oh, try again. Mm, yeah, all right. Play, okay. Now I've got my strip of paper. So proud of it. Such a good strip of paper. And I'm gonna fold that strip of paper in half like this, and so now it kind of looks like an alligator mouth. You're doing really well. This is the hard part. This is the difficult part. It's about to get really fun, okay? So now I've taken this and I open up the alligator's mouth, and on the very bottom, just on the little knuckle width or so, I'm gonna make a drawing of a pigeon. I'm gonna draw a circle of the pigeon's head, Pretty big eye, like this, and the two lines down for the neck, two across, and I'm gonna open up the beak really big and make these lines that come out. So it looks like the pigeon is yelling. You see, I drew the circle and the eye, and the circle and the open beak and the neck and the little movement. I'm gonna put in another little movement. And now I fold it over so I can't see. And now if I 
look, it's maybe hard to see on this camera. I can look, if I press really hard, I kind of can see that pigeon. I'm gonna draw the pigeon differently. I'm gonna draw the pigeon with a big head and a little eye. I'm gonna keep the neck pretty much the same. And I'm gonna close the mouth like that. See, I made the head bigger and the eye smaller and the mouth closed. If I look at that, it's open. There it's closed and it's normal sized and there it's big and the eye is normal sized and there it's small. I've got two different looking pigeons and we're going to make a drawing that goes back and forth. It's called a cycle, an animation cycle. So now I have my pencil and only with the top sheet, I'm roll it up like uh, like a hair roller or something. Roll, 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 roll. I see the bottom, but I don't see the top. And then I kind of let it go and see it springs like a curl. Now, this pencil is going to be my aperture. I'm going to take this pencil and I'm going to move it like this. And every time I go, the first drawing goes up and I go slowly and then I'll go faster faster and it will start to animate. Let me drive the bus! Please, I want to drive the bus. Oh wait, wow, look at me. I am animated. I have been animated by Mo. Wow, that is so cool. I like to do that. So much fun, let me drive the bus! And see, the faster I go, the faster it goes. And there's gonna be a rhythm that's the perfect rhythm that really feels like it's animating. All right, how's yours? How did that work out? Yeah, it's, it's hard, but when it works, it's really cool. You are an animator. Before we even started today, you were not an animator, and now you are an animator. Congratulations. You can draw pretty much anything. You can make a strip and Maybe draw a car, or somebody bouncing a ball, or, oh, I don't even know. You do all kinds of different things with this little piece of animation. And if you ever see a friend, you say, hey, you want to make an animation together? And then you guys can make animations. It's one of my favorite things to do. I really like making little animations with tiny pieces of paper. Well, a lot of you people have been watching, which is really exciting to me, the idea that you guys are drawing and doodling and watching and coming up with questions and making your own creatures and really being super, super creative. So I've got a couple questions that came to me. Here they are. And I thought it would be a fun time to answer them. So here are some random questions that we got that you guys sent in. The first one is from Isla, age eight in California. What happened to the birds on Piggy's head? Oh, that's a good question. So I think you are talking about the birds in the book, There Was a Bird on My Head, which is funny because I showed you the thing about the octopus on my head. Let's take a look, see where that book was. That was an early one. Oh, here it is. There's a bird on your head. And you're talking about this one. And the bird is mostly on Gerald's head for most of the book. And then at the very end, at the very end, the birds are on Piggy's head, right? So Isla wants to know, what happened to those birds? Well, Isla from California, they retired with a great benefit package and they are now living in Florida. They are snowbirds. Why won't you let the pigeon drive the bus, asks Will. Will is five. Uh, I have no problem with the pigeon driving the bus. You're the one who doesn't let the pigeon drive the bus. You're the one who yells, no, you can't drive the bus. And I think that you yell that because of, you know, insurance premiums and things like that. Uh, I just make the books. That's all I do. All right. How do you come up with such funny stories as Maureen, who lives in Maryland and is nine. Maureen, that's a very good question. We've talked a little bit earlier about how ideas are seeds that you plant and that you grow, but you don't always know that those 
plants, those story plants are going to be funny. So what I do is I put in everything in my stories, sadness and happiness and silliness and funniness and weirdness and sometimes smells, just everything. And then when I'm done, I take out all the not funny bits and hope that what's left is funny. I'm not saying that's how you should do it, it's just how I do it. Okay, Ella, another five-year-old, says, why is the pigeon always up to no good on the covers of the Elephant and Piggy books? Yeah, the pigeon hates it when I make books that are not about him. And so when I'm not looking and I leave this studio and I go back downstairs, the pigeon sneaks into every single one of my books. Every book that I've drawn, the pigeon sneaks in. Kind of like I used to sneak into all my cartoon films a long time ago. Uh, all right. Clara says, I really like recreating your drawings and coming up with my own books. Good for you, Clara. That's awesome. What color do you use for the pigeon? Blue, because the pigeon is sad. It doesn't really matter which blue, but it's probably pretty close to this. This is called azure, the very fancy way of saying blue. But any blue will do. If the pigeon found a new friend, what would that friend be? Says Galloway. Asks Galloway. If the pigeon found a new friend, what would that friend be? You. Why do you doodle? Because it's fun. Because it makes me feel better. And sometimes I doodle things that don't make any sense. Like the other day, I just wanted to show you this. I made this little abstraction. Just a bunch of squiggles of color together, and I don't know what it means, but it made me happy to make it, and it makes me happy to look at it. It looks like they're all playing around, and maybe this guy's trying to figure out how to get in on the game. So I thought for our final doodle today, maybe we'll do two things. We'll make an abstraction, and we'll turn it into little monsters. We'll do both. So. Let's grab a piece of paper. Yes, I got some sort of fancy old paper that I found. And this time, let's get a couple colored markers or crayons. Pause. Get the markers or the crayons. We're going to make lots and lots of shapes. Big shapes just with the markers or the crayons. Okay? You got that? And then you're also going to want a black pen or a dark colored pen or a dark pencil. So I'm pausing and waiting for you. Go find that if you don't already have it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to start by making just like a dot. I'm going to start on the inside. A red dot. Oh, yeah. One of the things that I like about drawing shapes is weird is how it sounds. Listen to that. You hear that? It's kind of like a rhythm. I like that. All right, red. So it's just a red dot right now. You can make whatever kind of dot you want. But when I take a little bit of blue and I make a different kind of jelly bean thing, and color that in. It has a relationship, right? The red and the blue are somehow related. They're talking to each other in some cool way. Oh, this is orange. Let's see. I'm making another sort of jelly bean. Right. Hear that sound? Colored in, colored in, colored in, colored in. I want to make it round. At one point went over. If I make a mistake, 
For the marker, I can just make my shape bigger. Now, I'm going to make a smaller yellow. And look at that. It's really changed quite a bit, right? And that's my abstraction. Here's what's cool about an abstraction, is after I'm done, maybe I'll say, well, maybe it looks better this way. Like, that's kind of cool. I'm kind of going up, getting darker. Or maybe it goes this way. I don't know. Maybe it goes that way. All right, that is my abstraction. Now I'm going to do something a little silly. So I'm going to turn my abstraction into a cartoon. Because I have my dark pen. In this case, for me, it's a brush pen. And I am going to turn these little shapes into jelly bean creatures. I'm going to give this guy a smile. He's got his arms up. He's got his arms up like that. Mm -hmm. And she is standing a little bit back because of social distancing. Doesn't want to, just not this week. Doesn't want to touch the orange guy, even though they like each other. Oh, and this, this is their dog. They're going out for a dog walk, I think. It's got a little tail. I still like taking out my dog. Right? And let's make this. This a bird flying, wondering what's going on with that very happy orange bean. All right, here we go. Most important, I write my name so that I know when I see it later who drew it. And now my abstract is a silly little scene. What did you turn your abstraction into? Let me take a look. Oh yeah, I like it. It's kind of fun. So that's a whole bunch of exercises that you can do now. Now you're an animator, you're an abstract artist, you can make jelly bean creatures, and you know how to do a dining room doodle, dinner doodle doodle diddle doodle doodle. So, I think that's a lot for today. So thank you guys for coming, and we will see you tomorrow on March 19th.